Okay, welcome to the next part of the video. This is another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this uh, part of the video series, we are taking a look at the XR2 Raven Star. We're kind of learning a little bit about how to use it as compared to the standard Delta Glider. And in order to do that, we're kind of revisiting some of the tasks that we've already done in the past. Uh, in, in this part of the video series, we are uh, going back to the ISS. So in the last video, we took off, we got into orbit, kind of explained a little bit about, you know, being careful not to overstress the landing gear on takeoff and how to uh, kind of use those scram engines to get up to orbital velocity so that we can save our main fuel. If you missed that video, definitely go back and check that out because this video is a direct continuation of that one. So let's go ahead and resume. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to uh, rendezvous with the space station. And we're, life is a little bit more difficult this time because we have uh, some perturbations enabled that we didn't have enabled back in part uh, six or seven or whatever it was when we did our first rendezvous with the ISS. But we've, we've established that our apoapsis is at this point and we know that <clears throat> we know that the altitude of the ISS is 353.7 at this point. So we're going to go around to our periapsis and we're going to adjust this side of our orbit so that it matches that number more closely. But before we do that, let's bring up a line plane MFD and let's follow. In fact, we are, let me pause because we're right here at this point. As we kind of go around the earth, uh, our relative inclination is going to uh, is going to go up and down because because of the perturbations that we have enabled. Uh, normally, when you get your relative inclination to 0, 0.00, it will stay at 0, 0.00 uh, as long as you don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled. But since we do have non-spherical gravity sources enabled, we have a constant thorn on our side to make adjustments here as needed. Notice that we're coming up to the descending node. And again, since this number is so low, there's no point in orienting the vessel into the uh, normal plus position. Instead, we'll do just like we did before using translation. This time we'll use the number two. Translate up and we'll bring that relative inclination back to a 0, 0.00, which we have now. And we've estimated thrust as 0, 0.00. So every time we go around, we're gonna check on that and do adjustments as needed just to make sure that we stay in alignment with the ISS. For now though, let's go over to our periapsis and adjust the side of our orbit to a 353.7. And you can notice that these kind of move in and out, so we have to we have to kind of pay attention to where these were originally, um, you know, these points of our orbit because they, with non-spherical gravity sources enabled, things kind of move around a bit. So probably right here about this point. Rotation. So let's rotate to prograde. And let's go inside the vessel for a moment, start the APU, and let's open the retro doors. Turn the APU back off to save that fuel. And remember, we wanted to lower the other side of our orbit down to 353.7. But here's the thing. When I was over here, I remember that the APA was 38-something. So here, there's about an, there's an additional 10 kilometers that we're probably going to have to lower our orbit by. Lower our orbit by. So instead of 376 down to 353, we probably want to go down to 3 probably close to 343. So a little bit of a reverse. Okay, there's 353. Let's cut the difference down the middle. Let's say 348. About right there, something like that. Okay, so now this part of our orbit over here is at 343. 
348 rather, but we believe, I believe it'll be more like 353 when I get over there. So let's bring up sync orbit MFD, but first of all, let's check our orbital period. 547, uh, five, or rather 5,476 seconds versus 5,489. So we're still a little bit faster. So when we get over to this point, we're going to need to raise this side of our orbit a little bit to slow ourselves down. So let's bring up sync orbit. Let's target the ISS. And that being the case, we probably will actually end up rendezvousing at our periapsis instead of our apoapsis. Because if we're going to raise this side of our orbit, then this side of our orbit is going to become our apoapsis. So ship's periapsis and the length out to 18. And for now, we're not worrying about these numbers because we still have some work to do. So let's come around to the opposite side, which is about over here. And also, let's bring up a line plane. So right about where my mouse cursor is at. And you can see our line plane is, you know, it's being affected a little bit. So when I get over here, I'm expecting to see that my altitude is about 353. Actually, it's going to be a little bit lower than that. Okay, that's fine. So we are at, we are actually at 346 at this point. So we're going to have to bring that up a little. 346.1K, and we need to bring that up to 353. So just a note, because you can see the altitude of the ISS currently is 354. By the time it gets over here, it's going to be down a little bit. Okay, now we need to raise the other side of our orbit a little bit, because we're, we're faster than the ISS. So we're going to raise the other side of our orbit to... Okay, let's check our orbital period. 5496, 5489. So, okay, we're now slower than the ISS, so it will catch up to us. It'll take it a while, but it will catch up to us eventually. Let's raise it a bit more on that other side. Got to 380, about right there. Now, when we get over here, we need to bring up our we need to bring up our altitude a bit here because we're still a little on the low side. You can see the altitude of the ISS right here is 353.6 and we're a bit we're quite a bit lower than that. We could probably make the rendezvous work, but it would be a pretty good separation. So mental note of this point straight across over to here. That's where we're gonna raise the other side of our orbit. So we're going to time warp over there. We're just going to be really careful with our time warp, though, because I think even going to 1,000 at this point could cause some problems. Watching the line plane MFD, it's a bit out. So if we catch up to the node here, we'll make an adjustment there. But once we get to this point where the mouse is at, we're going to raise the other side. Okay, right about here. Back to real time, go to prograde position, and it worked out that the relative inclination got back down to 0.00, .00 so we don't have to worry about that just yet. Okay, so we need to raise the other side by four or seven kilometers. So it's currently 339 over there. We're gonna bring it up to 340. Let me see. Six, but is that going to be enough? Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. A little bit of main engine. And I kind of overshot that a little bit. Didn't mean to do that. There we are. Okay, so now over here, we are at uh, 346. And I believe that'll be closer to the uh, 353. It's, again, it's unfortunate that this MFD 
uh, when you have the non-spherical gravity sources enabled that you can't actually rely on these numbers but you know so you have to do a little bit of correction a little bit of mental correction okay now let's bring up sync orbit mfd and according to sync orbit we're uh, this number is the difference in our orbital period so we don't we don't want to make that adjustment here we want to make the adjustment over here at the rendezvous point so we're going to warp time forward at 100 come over here to the rendezvous point and we'll do a bit of an adjustment and that it's really difficult to make that adjustment because the dt min is clearly not reliable with this with the uh, non-spherical gravity sources enabled but we will do what we can. Okay, altitude is our rendezvous altitude. It's close to it, so let's go back to real time. Let's go to prograde, and we'll do an adjustment on the uh, DT min to bring that down to zero. And we'll just have to, on each orbit that we go around, we'll just have to do a, a further correction. But we should have everything pretty well set up. Let's watch our altitude, uh, 353.7, as I, I believe is going to be the actual altitude of a rendezvous. So let's watch here. Let's go forward a little bit farther. And I'd say right about there is good enough. Now, translation. with translation, um, let me just think about this for a second. We are, the, the ship's time to the rendezvous point is less than the target, so we need to burn a bit of forward translation. Yep, that's bringing the DT men down. And there we go. I don't believe it will ever get to 0.00, .00 and hold, so we're not even going to try. We're just we just know that this point of our orbit is where we're going to rendezvous. Now let's catch up to the ISS, uh, rather let's have it catch up to us, and we'll do that just by warping time forward. At uh, We'll probably just stick with 100 due to, the, due to the inaccuracies of the MFDs. I guess maybe 1,000 will be okay too, but... So we'll kind of go back and forth between this MFD and the line plane MFD. Uh, we can see our relative inclinations off here. As long as this stays at 0, 0.0, you know, 1, 2, 3, anything low like that, then I'm not going to bother adjusting the adjusting the align plane. I just want to make sure that I'm getting closer to the ISS with each pass, and we know that we're rendezvousing somewhere over here in this area. And as we get down here to our rendezvous point, we just want to watch our DT min and make sure that it does actually hit zero at some point. Okay, it did. Let's go around again. And on, you know, we're going to, it will catch up to us here in just a couple more orbits. And when we get down to the last orbit, we will bring up the uh, comnav stuff and start setting up the frequencies watching the relative inclination and when we come back around here again I'll, I want to check out the altitudes for everything again just to make sure that we are going to arrive at a point in space where our altitude is similar to what the ISS's altitude is watching our DT min. It's pretty far off, but as we get down here to this point, you notice it's going backwards. That's fine. Okay, let's check our altitudes. We're at 353.2 altitude of the ISS. Uh, it's a little behind us still, so its altitude should come down a bit as it goes forward, and it does. And let's watch our DT min again. And in fact, I think I'm going to go prograde here. And 
let's just do a bit of an adjustment on the DT min. Rotation. Translation. Okay, now our relative inclination is 0, 0.00. Our DT min is, you know, basically zero. It's going to change because of the because of the perturbations. So let's bring up ComNav, and we already have the transponder for the ISS. So that was uh, input by default for this scenario. Let's go to the vessel though, and let's check to make sure that we have a docking port selected as well. 13130 and then 13740 for docking port number one and I typically prefer docking port number three so I'm going to go 13720 so let's back that up to 13720 there we go and let's bring back up orbit MFD let's go around again we still have a uh, still have a full orbit to make and then some But you can see that the line representing the ISS is closing in on us a little bit. If we switch over to dock HUD, then this will eventually change over to show us uh, our distance from the ISS. And we still have uh, about an orbit and a half to go. And once again, on this final orbit, we're just going to check everything out, make sure that our relative inclination is low, if not 0, 0.00 exactly, at least it'll be very low. Check our altitudes, check our DT min, because on the next trip around, that's going to be when we're going to catch up to the, I that's when the ISS will catch up to us. So about here, our altitude's 353, altitude of the ISS is 353.1, so we're right where we need to be altitude wise and we are you know at periapsis so ships periapsis that's what we have set but our distance our difference here is a bit more than it needs to be so let's uh do a last little bit of translation correction for that rotation translation And hopefully then within the next orbit around, everything will be lined up nicely. Switch over to dock. Let me check the comm nav just one more time. Okay. So what I need to do is bring up the docking MFD, switch over to nav two. Press HUD to copy that information to the HUD, and now we have now we have the data for the ISS here on the HUD. We probably don't need orbit MFD any longer, and we don't really need sync orbit anymore either. But let's let's get a little bit closer. We already have the retro doors open for for our vessel so we can do a braking burn when we get close to the ISS. And we've got a half orbit to go. And we are 55, actually let me bring up a different MFD at this point. Let's bring up the docking MFD. We're 42 kilometers out. Let's orient Rotation. the vessel toward the ISS. And if we recall from the first time we did this in the Absolute Beginner Guide, you can remember remember that one way to know when to begin your braking burn um, is the trial and error method. But we talked in the burn time calculator installation and basic usage uh, video how we can have more accuracy on when to begin slowing ourselves down. So let's use the more accurate method. Let's bring up burn time calculator. And we don't need to do the burn at apoapsis or periapsis. So let's go to manual start. And there's really no need to do that, but I like to see this being zero, zero, zero. Our difference in velocity between ourselves and the ISS 
is this number here, uh, SIVO, and we want to know how long it's going to take to eliminate that much velocity if we use the uh, either the full power of the main engines or if we're going to use the retro engines, which is what I would prefer. I would rather face the positive velocity vector and use the retro engines. And the, the delta V is this number, but notice it's getting lower as we get closer to the ISS. But we'll put in this number for now just to get an idea. So we'll put in 43.25. And according to burn time calculator, if we're going to use the retro engines, we need uh, 217 meters to eliminate that much velocity. So not very much, not very much time at all, not very much distance. So let's bring back up uh, sync orbit because we still have about a half orbit to go before we get over to the rendezvous point. This line here being the rendezvous point. And if we did all of our calculations and everything correctly, then by the time we get over here, we will be at about 353 uh, some odd kilometers. And so will the ISS. And we will also be passing the same point in space at that time. So we're not now distance is down to 27 kilometers, 26. So as we continue to go forward, it may actually, from the looks of things, our distance may actually increase at some point and then go back down. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on that, but we're still 2,000 seconds away from the rendezvous point. Let's go ahead and go to 100. And the ISS is coming around here. You can see it over there. We still have a 1,200 seconds to go to the rendezvous point, and we should be coming into sunrise at that time as well. We may be a little bit off on that, but we'll see when we get there. Let's go ahead and warp time forward a little faster, being careful not to overshoot everything. But we're eight kilometers out, seven kilometers out, six kilometers out, and we're approaching. I guess our difference in velocity now is down to just six meters a second, so we should have a nice slow encounter, which is always good. Uh, a more The more realistic approach to the ISS or to really to rendezvous with any object would be to have a very slow encounter velocity. Thousand. Down to just five kilometers. Let me rotate the vessel. Translation. Rotation. And I don't actually know what the velocity difference will be at the time of rendezvous. As far as I know, these MFDs don't tell you. If we were using Transex, it would actually tell us what the uh, encounter velocity would be. So we're down to four kilometers out, but we still have technically uh, 11, 12, 13 minutes, something like that, to the rendezvous point. So that just means that we're going to continue to get closer oh, to the ISS. We velocity difference is very low, so we could pretty much take care of that just with translation. But we'll go ahead and use the retro engines. Three thousand. Uh, we don't really need to calculate it at this point because it's so low. But if we bring up burn time calculator and we look at our difference in velocity, if we input the number, which is now nine, and it's kind of going up a little bit, but you can see in order to eliminate that difference in velocity. We only need a few meters, and we don't want to get this close to the ISS before we eliminate the velocity. So we're basically just going to do it uh, manually, rather than you know bothering to use a burn time calculator. Again, if it was a larger number, we would want to do the burn, but it's so slight that we'll just wait till we get down to maybe 500 meters from the ISS, and then we'll eliminate that last little bit of difference. Let's get a little closer. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that number anymore. 2000. We just want to watch our diff our distance to the ISS. In fact, let's power that side off. 1,900. Okay. Translation. Rotation. Now, let's rotate to the positive velocity vector. And we're still getting closer to the ISS, so we're going to wait till 
this is about as low as it's going to get. Uh, we can even watch it here because it's going to be off the view here in a moment. And once this number is as low as it will get, we're just going to start using the reverse translation and or the retro engines. And we're using the reverse because we're facing the positive velocity vector. If we were facing the negative velocity vector, we would use forward translation. So just watching this number here. Once it's as low as it's going to be, we'll engage. Let's go forward a little bit faster. 400. Translation. Oops. Rotation. Okay, now we're getting away from the ISS. You can see it's uh, the diff the the distance is increasing. So I'm using the, the reverse thrusters to bring that VISS number down to basically zero. Translation. Rotation. Translation. And there it is, it's basically Rotation. zero. So we are stopped right alongside the ISS, which is a good timing because we're about 30 minutes on this video again. But let's rotate over to look at the ISS. And there it is. And before we end the part of the, this part of the video, let's go to translation. Translation. And let's set the velocity vector right on the center of the ISS, which means we're moving towards it. And we don't want to move toward it very quickly, maybe just one meter a second. But that just uh, gets us, you know, moving in this direction instead of away from it. Let me power off that side for now. And when we come back, we'll actually complete the, uh, the, we'll close the last little bit of distance, which is just 430 meters, and we'll get docked with the ISS. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what's different between the XR2 and the Delta Glider. When docking, there's not a big difference, but there maybe is one or two things that we can talk about. So if you like this part of the video, hit the like button. Uh, if you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe so you can be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos. And check the description down below for a link to my Facebook page where I post all my videos, all my Orbiter videos at least, and other space-related content, things that you don't necessarily get to see here on my YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next video.